And we'll talk, we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about it on the air. Hey, folks, Bob Path here. We're about to go live in just a little bit with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis. Really exciting because, obviously, uh, those of you who are out there listening to and watching the news, you know that uh, Mayor Pugh has just announced another uh, uh, Baltimore City Police Commissioner. We're going to chat about that so the timing couldn't be better for this show. So tune in. Uh, give us a call. We're going to try to take your calls, but I suspect we got a lot to talk about here tonight, and I don't know if we're going to get them. But for those of you tuning in from California, we've got folks in Scotland, uh, Florida, all over the place that are tuning in, sharing it. Thanks for weighing in here now uh, on Facebook, but stick with us. We'll be, uh, we'll be going live in just a few minutes. Just come see your Ford dealer during our holiday sales event for our best offers of the year. Kevin, you want to check your uh, your headset? Volume is down to the to the uh, should be to the left of you. What's that? I, I don't control my own volume. You do. do. You should have a button right under the desk. Uh, See it? Uh, yeah. Got it? You okay? Yeah. So, Gilman, my football coach is a math of football coach for 39 years. He left and went to Gilman. Oh, really? Oh, he did? Okay. So, he coached with Cody along with. Well, uh, you know, Gilman, clearly the football program is not what Henry Smythe is all about anymore. So it's not what they want Although to do. I've, I've heard they're going to start getting some more good kids. They're going to not, not quite to the level it was when Koji was here, but they're going to start getting some kids. Because, you know, it's, it's kind of disparaging. Like the most popular sport at Gilman is probably volleyball, right? Like, volleyball games. Hey, John. Hey, Barb. No, more people come out to volleyball games than the cross the Every single plant of Maryland Health Connection includes doctor visits, prescriptions, and more. 140? And that's police officers, so it's not first responders, that's police officers. Okay, just cops. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We got Canada just waved in. There we go. Oh, my God. It's uh, you know, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, California. Uh -oh. um, you know what? I never even really, I mean, it just, just blows up. You on Twitter too, Bob? I am on Twitter. I don't use Twitter as much. I mean, I, I you know, I, I like Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a huge platform for me. Huge platform for me. That's yours. All right. Hey, I was the first to do my own Twitter. And I was really? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll talk a little bit about obviously introduce you we're going to go we're going to kind of go right into this but I just think it's kind of screaming for us to talk about this uh, Joel Fitzgerald guy and um, and geez here we go again and this is a mayor that promised promised transparency in her administration and um, and now we've got this and what do we say this is her fourth right if this guy gets confirmed he's the fourth. 
Oh, then I'll bet you they're not happy. Right. Right. All right, guys. Here we go. Billy. Hey folks, Bob Path here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've got everybody weighing in on Facebook Live. You're all over the country, and I don't want to say all over the world. We've got some Ireland, some Scotland people that are weighing in as well. Um, we've got a super exciting show for you, and you know, there's an expression that I love that says, timing is not everything, it's the only thing. And we've got former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis sitting right across from you now, and really on the heels, on the heels, Kevin, we're going to bring you right into this, of, of the mayor of Baltimore, Mayor Pugh, naming what will be, if confirmed, and you and I were chatting about that, the confirmation process and what that's going to look like, but this would be her fourth police commissioner since she's been mayor. Is that Do I have that right? Yeah, Bob. Well, first, thanks for, for having me on, and it seems like a million years ago, but it was only... Uh, uh, January that I finished my nearly three-year tenure as police commissioner in Baltimore, but but here we go. Um, we'll see what happens. I wish him the best of luck. Well, it's unbelievable, and I and I have to think. And Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the reports are coming out. Is that listen? This is a mayor that promised a, a transparent administration. She was going to do everything transparently and open up the books, and, and, and this was done by all accounts in secrecy. I think the governor's weighed in on this. The city council didn't have a part of this. So the, the question has to be, you know, this guy is going to be looking at a tough confirmation process. I have to think in some ways that it's going to be a slap against the mayor. How do you get this guy through? Well, Bob, I, I think I mentioned to you earlier off the air, I know Joel Fitzgerald. Okay. He's, he's a true pro. All he right. And I, he and I interacted at major city chiefs conferences on, on, on more than one occasion, so I wish him the best. But it's not fair to the newly um, to the new police commissioner to have his announcement break on a Friday night. It's not a news conference. That's, that's right. Very, that's very odd. Yeah. And when the mayor stands up and says, this is my process, and defines her process right. as a very transparent one, yeah. we're going to go on a listening tour, I'm going to introduce them to the community, I'm right. going to introduce the candidates to the council, and then when she doesn't do that... Yeah. That's offensive to people. Exactly. So, so now they're going to they're gonna have some type of response to that because it's only human nature. And my fear is that Joel Fitzgerald will, will suffer because of, of the fact, and I'm sorry to say it, but of the fact that she didn't do... What she didn't do what she said she was going to do. do. Correct. And that's unfair to Joel right. Fitzgerald. Right. Well, when it leaked, what, I think just a few weeks ago, there were rumors that this was going to be the guy, and then everybody was scrambling about that. The folks in Fort Worth were scrambling about it, and she was running for cover. And then, ultimately, what she does, what she does, uh, Kevin, is is springs this guy. It's the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, typically, and I'll be the first to admit this, be, you know, I'm out of the profession now, but you, you typically release bad news late on Friday. Okay, or all right. Before Thanksgiving. All right, folks, you hearing that? But if you have good news, and the announcement of a, a new police... It's a big deal, particularly in Baltimore. Deal, it's huge. It should be good news. That's right, should be. So you don't let it break on a Friday. You'll let it slip night. out. It's, it's, it's amateur... It's amateur hour. Continue. Amateur hour continues at City Hall. So let's like let's dig a little bit deeper because we've opened up this. We've sort of ripped, ripped, ripped the Band-Aid off of this. I'm not a big fan of this mayor, and quite honestly, I think she's worse than anybody, at least from my perspective, than, than I thought she was going to be. I am a native. For those of you who don't remember, I'm a native of Baltimore. I was born on Duncan Street. I know you as a cop. You know where Duncan Street is. Uh, yeah. Right next to the <laughs> Northeast Market. As a matter of fact, my block's been torn down. It brought a tear to my eye when I went back to St. Wenceslaus for Mass one Sunday. My block of Duncan Street is gone. And so I say this to you, I went to Lake Clifton High School. And so I really am invested in this city. I live in the city. I have six children that are in this city. Folks, I want this city to do well. And Kevin, I know you do. Even though you're out, we want this. You know, it's, it's it, and we're going to have Mike Gill is going to be on the show. We're going to talk about former years of Larry Hogan. What does it look like? The state of Maryland, Baltimore is really the crown jewel. We're not the capital, but, you know, the state of Maryland goes by the way of Baltimore City. This city has to be successful, Kevin. A absolutely. And, you know, Bob, I've worked for two county executives and two mayors in my career, and all of them have 
very hard, difficult jobs. And it's particularly challenging to be the mayor of any big city, but right. particularly Baltimore post-2015 riots. So uh, I think the entire city wants its mayor to succeed, no matter who its mayor Agreed. is. Agreed. But you've got to block and tackle. And if you say you're going to do things, you have to do those things. And I've said on more than one occasion recently, Joel Fitzgerald needs to uh, consider very strongly bringing in his own team of executive committee. Maybe cleaning some house? It's a culturally okay. dysfunctional police department. That's why the city of Baltimore is in a consent decree. And when all mm. things are equal, wow. and when you're living in peace times, it is perfectly normal for a police commissioner to emerge from the BPD. But because of the cultural dysfunction, that can't happen right now. So the new police commissioner needs wow. to come in, bring an entire new executive team. I piecemealed it. Yeah. One of the mistakes I made is I, I should have done a, a bigger change right. right off the bat back in 2015. But the, well, you came right, you came in right after Bats, right? So right Bats got fired, and then you came in. So you had to jump in. I jumped, jumped right. right in. Right. And, and, you know, I did bring some people with me. I brought T.J. Smith with me. Right. Uh, who, who we've lost. Knows. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but, but I brought a lot of people in, in with me, but not enough. And, you know, we all should stand behind Joel Fitzgerald uh, and, and support him. But guess who needs to support him as well, unconditionally? The mayor. The mayor. The, the mayor, council president, yeah, and the city council. But yeah. the city council president and the city council are are kind of are kind of you know once bitten twice shy right now. Yeah, because they were told they were going to be part of this process, Bob. And, and now they're not. And yeah, yeah, and they're going to go for you know to use the term blood, but you know there's going to be more infighting and and battling with this whole thing, and it's just really. You know, one of the things we talk about, Kevin, on this show, and I have a, I'm a big believer, Every I, I look at what Giuliani did and I look at what Bloomberg did in the state of New York. Um, a city needs to be safe and clean. That perspective, if you're walking around and you th and things are dirty and, and, and you know, there's a sense of, uh, of being unsafe. And we need to have that partnership. We're going to talk about this. We're going to come back on the other side of this break. We've got about a minute. Folks, you're listening to the Bob Pass Show with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis on the heels now of, of this mayor. Mayor Catherine Pugh announcing, I think it's her her fourth commissioner. If this guy's confirmed uh, out of Fort Worth, Texas, Joel Fitzgerald. And uh, so we're going to come back. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Commissioner Davis. And we're going to talk about what he's doing and what he thinks we need to do as a city to get back on track. You're listening to The Bob Pav Show. We can take your calls, 410-922-6680. We'll be right back. I was going to let you know you had two calls. Already. Good. Good. All right. Yeah, and, and I, I want to be like two different things. I want to support him, wish him the best. Yeah. But he's all supporting Yeah. But on the other hand, does he know what he's dealing with? I mean, as far as coming into that, it's got to be like you, you can't. You can't imagine that, Kevin. Right. You can't. You, you don't know what it's like to experience. Right. That's right. That's right. Because Fort Worth is not Baltimore. But, but, but then again, there's no place. How big of a city? Give me us. So Baltimore is the 16th largest in the country. What's Fort Worth? Our statistician over there, right? Because that's a good question. If it's. Uh, but you don't even have to go to New York, I just go to DC. DC is complete turnaround. Right, right. Crime, public safety, economy, corruption. Um, okay, so it is a population of um, about like 807,000. So it's bigger than Baltimore. Here we go. She's. Be right back. I'm going to talk a little bit about your background. All right. Hey, folks, it's Bob Paff. Thanks for coming back to us. Really excited uh, to have former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis in the studio with us. And we've got a lot we want to cover. I see folks are holding on, and I'm going to try to take your calls. But I got to tell you, we've got a lot to talk uh uh, with about the, uh, you know, to the former commissioner. And I want to make sure that we cover all this. In, in fairness to him, and I, I, I want to I really acknowledge you, Kevin, and, and talk about what you did in Anne Arundel County. I want to talk about what you did in Prince George's County because a lot of people didn't really have the time to get to know you, in, uh, in fairness to you. Um, so in Anne Arundel County, you were the police commissioner. You're the one that really introduced the, the Narcan and the, lock, uh, and the lock zone to the police, not the fire department, to the police about saving lives, right? That was, whole, that was your program in Anne Arundel County. It, it was, Bob. And, and what we did back in 2013 and 2014 when this opioid epidemic was just killing people, uh, we knew we had to do something. So we were the first police department in Maryland, the Anne Arundel County Police Department, to mandate and issue naloxone for police officers to not only carry but administer and save lives and 
really, it was it was odd. We were only the twenty second police department in the country to do that. It, thousands of wow. them do it now, but so often the police are the first on the scene of a crisis. Correct. And you, shame on us if we sit there and watch someone die of a drug overdose, waiting for fire and EMS to get there. If we can carry a simple tool, a simple nasal spray. And save someone's life. Right. Uh, but that was a big cultural change. We introduced a crisis response team to the Anne Arundel County Police Department. I later brought that to Baltimore to interact with people with mental illness and behavioral uh, health issues. Uh, and working with Dr. Crisis. Wend, the former the Dr. former Dr. health commissioner, right? Was, was great. But you know, the cops, you know, putting handcuffs on every problem doesn't work. Now, do, I love that. Do, do some bad guys need a pair of handcuffs? Right. Need to sit in jail? Yes. But there are a lot of people out there who suffer from drug addiction. And suffer from mental Kevin, let's talk about mental illness because you, you, you're you're one of the leaders on that, recognizing the mental illness that surrounds a lot of these issues. Right. So uh, what we did in Anne Arundel is the same thing we did in Baltimore, a blended team of mental health professionals and cops okay. that go out to these mental or, or these, these behavioral crisis events that are in progress, not the day after, not the week after, not after they read a report, but they go out to a behavioral crisis in uh, in. In, in, in progress, and they divert the the person, which is often the patient, to some type of treatment, whether it's short term or or long term. And it's just the way forward. Uh, I brought the uh, law enforcement assisted diversion. We were the fifth police department in the country to do the lead. It started in Seattle. It's a immediate alternative to an arrest for a low level drug offender, somebody who's. Uh, in possession of a misdemeanor amount of drugs, who's clearly addicted to the drugs and needs to be diverted into treatment. So those are some of the quote unquote softer things we did, yep. but necessarily so. Uh, you know, the the incarceration uh, is a tool that should exist and does exist, but we need to put violent people and people who harm others in jail and and save the treatment for people who who quite frankly need it. Well, it has to be. Talk about a blended program, and we really need and prison reform and, and just everything. The entire system needs to be looked at. It just seems like we're throwing a lot of money and throwing a lot of Band-Aids um, at these things. But uh, and w one of the things that we talked about, and this was really shocking to me, folks, you know who follow me and listen to me, that um, I do a lot of work around suicide prevention, and we were just talking to the former commissioner that 140 police officers, police officers, not first responders, 140 police officers in 2000. 17, which is probably the most recent data from the CDC, committed suicide. Yeah, and, and, and very sadly, Bob, uh, just like a few days ago, not even last week, a few days ago, Baltimore County, a very highly regarded Baltimore County police officer took his own life as well. So all these high stress oh. professions, and, and it's not just the police, it's fire, EMS, it's it, it's attorneys, it's, um, it's emergency. Anybody in a high stress? It's journalists. Journalists. You know, oh, yeah. It, it's people who come to work every day, and, and their they're, they're world gets turned upside down by, by the crazy. Well, look at, Tuck, look, look at Tucker Carlson. He goes on the air, and then people are showing up at his house. He's got a wife and four kids there, yeah. and they're posting his brother's address and his and, and all this kind yeah, of stuff. That's so this stressful. And, and I'm proud of this, too, Bob, if I can just brag. Yeah, absolutely. When I got Please. to the Baltimore Police Department, there was no in-house psychological services. No. None. none. Zero. So we had it in Prince George's my entire career. Uh, it existed in Anne Arundel. And when I got to the eighth largest police department in the country, there was no in-house psychological services. We created that. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake stood with me, stood that up with me. And then I brought in a guy by the name of Vernon Heron uh, from Prince George's, and we established an in-house um, program that dealt with police officers who were on the verge of getting themselves you know, down the wrong path and we introduce an intervention program with them as well. Unbelievable. I mean, I, you know, and, and if you look at, and, and we do, the suicide, the numbers in 2016, there were 46,000 suicides, there were 18,000 murders. Uh, the loneliness, we're less connected. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Senator Sass from Nebraska. We talk about we're not a, Kevin, when I grew up at, and, and, at the St. Wenceslaus Lost Parish and then Bel Air Edison, the cops were your friends. You went to the cops. You, you, you had a feeling they looked out for you. They took care of you. And now I have to tell you, even as a 58-year-old man myself, I perceive that whole thing differently. I want to talk about that. We're going to have to take a break. And we've got two callers. We'll try to get through those callers. Folks, you're listening to The Bob Pav Show on WCBM 680. Uh, give us a call. We're going to try to get your call. I'm here with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis on the heels of uh, now what's about to be our ninth 
yeah, you heard it right, our ninth, fourth police commissioner under this mayor, if in fact this person is confirmed. I don't, I don't uh, envy him. The process he's going to have um, could be brutal. But something's got to change. Something's got to give. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Bob Pass Show on WCBM. We'll see you soon. I just looked up to see a lot more stats on Fort Worth, on the latest, like, the most dangerous cities and, uh, or most, like, the highest homicide rates. Baltimore ranks two and Fort Worth ranks farther down the line at 36. Um, and also the CDC uh, in terms of um, suicide rates for occupations, uh, police work is right to six. What's the one? Suicide is the It's more like... Dentists are up there. Lawyers are up there, too, now. Yeah, yeah lawyers are up there, too. Like farm workers. Lawyers are high up there. The problem with lawyers is they're very unhappy and they get into this lifestyle that they can't get themselves out of. That's the problem. They're stuck. They're stuck. Yeah. So when I get to Baltimore, there's no one else. That's incredible. That's incredible. The PTSD and everything else that you're thinking about that people are dealing with this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go through sort of the, the chronology of your appointment coming in after bats. We'll talk about you were appointed by Blake. Um, I'm going to throw it out there about you being really scapegoated with the Sean Suter thing, and then you can go wherever you want with that whole thing. But um, and, and I know, and you've been very public about you disagree with the findings in the report that it may have been a suicide. So that's you. you, you they've not changed their ruling. Okay. Oh, really? That it was a homicide. Well, that's interesting stuff too for us. So I'm, I'll open that up to you, and you can you can shed a light on that. I may take. Let me chat with Anita. I want to make sure that I don't get crazies that are calling, and she does a great job of getting that. Anita, I'll call us. Kevin, I'm going to take one call and then I'm going to cut them off. Anita will cut them off and say thank you, Joe, for the call or Claude, or whatever, because I don't want anybody to dominate the thing. We'll take the call, we'll respond to the question. Right? It does. I've talked to uh, a couple college counselors. I'm, I kind of want to go to, to a, like a bigger school. Like, yeah. I think what they like want me to look at is like Vanderbilt, Duke, UNC. Yeah. 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 Hey, Mike Pipito, what number? I don't know what number you're talking about, guy. So, um. I, I'll go right to a caller. No, I'm on. Everybody thought I was. And they thought I was on two. I'm only on Fridays. Yeah, and we just started October fifth. So yes, it can change. The goal was syndication, but I want to do something that's not a political show. I want to get interesting people. You know, like Mike's going to come on and talk about the economy. Mike is great. And I've known Mike for 25 years, and then Bob Carrot's going to come on. I'm going to have the two of them. You know, I don't know. I, I've heard different things. Right. Well, why not? Kind of what? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's such no, he's such a great guy. He's such a great guy. Oh yeah. Yes. No, he's Mr. Towson. Did you go to Towson? Did you? Literally right across the street from university. Okay. Right. Right. That's exactly right. Towson University. Does police corruption play a part into this number at all? But I don't know what number. Mike, I see your question, but I don't know what number you're talking about. Does police corruption play a part in this number? I don't know. So tell me what what. Uh, number you're looking at. Maybe it's suicide. Here we go.
Hey folks, you're back with Bob Papp and former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis. Really appreciate all of you weighing in from all over the country, if not all over the world. We're going to go to a caller really quick, Anita. We're going to talk to Claude in East Baltimore. Claude, you're on the line. What's your question, Claude? Claude, well, I want to make sure we get you in. Do you have a question for the commissioner or are you just um, uh, the compliment, which is great, but is there a question that? Yeah. All right, thank you. So what's going to be different with this guy than, than what uh, Commissioner Davis couldn't do? Yeah. Well, well, thanks, for, Claude, for the, the call and the compliment. Uh, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, there are probably 50 to 100 police executives in the country who are well qualified to be the police commissioner of a city like Baltimore. But the difference maker is the level of support he or she receives. So the mayor and the city council have to unconditionally support the police commissioner. If you look at Baltimore versus Washington, D.C., they have 1,300 more police officers than we do. And they wow. have one third of the violent crime. So we are a woefully understaffed police department. So you know we, we have to get real about that. And we have to pay police officers in Baltimore because they have the toughest job of any police department in the state. They should be the best paid. We should find a way to give them residency options so they can afford to live in the city. Uh, we, we should do more to retain our young cops because they are leaving uh, at a far higher rate than any other police department in Maryland. So now that wow. Joel Fitzgerald has been identified, and consider me uh, a fan, Joel, if you you or anyone else or close to you are listening to this, uh, happy to help you and bring in your own team, and you know, I, I'm hopeful that the unconditional support you need to succeed comes your way from City Hall, because I'll tell you this, the city, the residents, the, the folks who live here, uh, in spite of what people may hear outside of Baltimore, they want the police to succeed. They want the Absolutely. police to succeed. But the politicians, because of the gamesmanship, because of who's starting to run for mayor in 2020 and the alliances that people form, um, it's a game to so many people. And that's why we have to term limit the city council and we, we have to do better uh, at having a, uh, a, political, uh, a political machine that's more inclusive of differing points of view here in the city, Bob. Well, it's, you know, as I, I look, I go back and, and I think prior to 2015, 2015 was a pivotal year. I mean, I think that that was the first year I think that the death, to, uh, the murder rate exceeded 300. We had 342 murders in 2015, 343 in 2017. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and we're trending. What, what's, what, what are the current numbers? I mean, the current numbers are we'll probably hit three, 300 this year. Uh, and so what I hear you saying is not only can't we attract these these officers to come on board, we're losing them. We're losing them at a rapid rate because of the support, they're not giving the unconditional support, they're not giving the training. Kevin, I can't believe you were just talking about the, the whole mental health issue and nothing existed prior to you coming on board. These are people that are probably experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder and everything else. They're putting their, literally, they're putting their lives on the line every day. And for these things not to exist... Folks, I think you need to reach out to your politicians. It's, it's you've heard the commissioner say that it is the politicians, it is it is it, the partisanism uh, of you know the finger pointing and everything else. That's really, I mean, we need to unify everybody. We need to support the police. We need to be out there behind them. We need to give them everything that they need to do to be as successful as they can possibly be. Or we're going to have another guy coming and coming and going. So anyway, um, give us a call 410-922-6680. You're listening to the Bob Pav Show. We're here with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis. We're going to talk about what does Commissioner Davis think we can do? Can we turn this around? What does it look like? What do we have to do? What dramatic steps do we have to take? You're listening to the Bob Path Show on WCBM 680 AM. Mr. Davis, 
Um, what's this like, you by Crab so like, I know there was like a huge influx of police officers that were hired by the, the mayor and the city following like, like, wasn't there like a period where it was like we lost a lot of police officers so they tried to rush new, new ones in? Okay. The only year we broke even with attrition, so we hired the same amount of police officers that we lost to resignation or retirement uh, in 2017. So the Baltimore Police Department, every month loses to attrition about 20 police officers. So that means that you've got to hire 20 police officers a month just to stay where you are. Mm -hmm. And then to go beyond that, you've got to pump these academy classes in. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm saying, like the, the, the pumping out of police officers. Like I, no, it has not happened. Okay. It has okay. not. So the now, size of a police officer, Fred Biafo was a police commissioner, two police commissioners before me. He had 512 more police officers in 2012 than I had in 2018. Wow. So there's been an intentional reduction in the size of the police force. And it's been very intentional by the mayors and the And again, D.C. has got 1,300 more cops, one-third of our own now, keeping you connected uh, with the latest views, pre this is Talk Radio 680 WCBM and, and WCBM.com. We lost hundreds of police officers. Good evening, I'm Lee Filippelli in the 680 WCBM Maryland News Center. And it's hard to catch up because you've got to hire 20 cops a month just to stay trending water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what, 240 cops? Yeah, but then you're still in the hole. But if we were the best paid, the best equipped, with the best benefits, best education in the center, best housing in the center, we would get those cops in and out of the Baltimore County and Yeah, well, we're not even in the state, like, and we're, and we're, the, we're the city that, need, or like, the state that needs it. Yeah. So I got somebody on Facebook Live who wants to know, Kevin, what you think of it. The main reason why the suicide rate continues to increase every year. I mean, that's a, I don't know if you... This is stress of the job. It has previously been rejected because of a missing or inaccurate date of birth. Yeah, I don't Students mind. at two Maryland campuses are demanding their universities and contracts. U.S. immigration and But the profession is doing a better job than it ever has with early intervention stress. Mm -hmm. Well, like, I didn't even have any early intervention stress. And she just lets them fall off the cliff. And the University of Maryland College Park are too bad. It's unbelievable. But, you know, early intervention strategies yeah. aren't psychological right studies. Yeah. We're better than ever as a profession. Okay. We still have a long, so long way to go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's, you know, the CDM very, you know, she is more male dominated. Right, right, right. Cops are more likely, the, the millennial generation is more likely to raise their hand and say, hey, I need help. Right. Than the previous generation. Yeah. But they still don't do it. Really? It's a time he gets to know a patient. Review their medical history. I don't know how you turn it back. Once you get a, once you get a, um, a population that's really afraid of the police or whatever, I don't know how you reverse. I mean, we've got such major problems in the city yeah, across the board. Right. Right. And all the things that he, and you're going to love this, all the things that he, all the things that he talks about. I mean, it's just unbelievable. He just got elected in 2015. Okay. Oh, people are always 46 years old. People are talking about this guy for president. Yeah, yeah and I'd vote for him. I, I just love him. I mean, he's just terrific. He told his wife and three kids that he would decide after. Yeah, Ben Sass. Let's say yes, let's say. Um, a guy like Sass isn't going to do it because he's 46 years old. He's got plenty of time. But, um, you know, Mike Pence wants to be president, so I think everybody's going to play nice in the sandbox for a while. It'll be interesting. Is he going to run against this opening? Who, Pence? Oh, I recognize that. Yeah. yeah. He's a young guy. Yeah, 46. Yeah. yeah. Is he going to run against Goes back and forth in Nebraska all the time. I mean, he's just a really, a really cool dude. He is a Republican. And has, and has stood up against Trump and has disagreed with a lot of things and not have been afraid to admit it. But just... Um, so I met him. I was in the VIP lounge at the press club, National Press Club, and met him and talked to him, gave him a copy of my book. Um, really good guy. Really, really like him. It's funny because inside of the, my book that I gave him, I said "Sass for president." And he said, "I'm just going to scratch that out." I told my wife that we'll, we'll we'll revisit this whole thing after I've been in the Senate for a few years. But he's a really good guy. Taylor's going to get him on the show, right? We're going to get him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like a channel two. Do they? Okay. <laughs> they're going to meet you in the. Yeah. Uh, the show. Okay. So to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> but 
So they know you're here now. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you were the scapegoat. You're kidding me. I knew about the whole thing with TJ. Really, you two? Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Here we go, guys. Why are so many of them progressives? Why are so many of them Democrats? Mark Levin. The Democrat Party's all about the power of government. We're a relative handful of people control an army of bureaucrats and compel the nation, compel the nation. to conform to their ideology. Tonight at 7 on Talk Radio 680 WCBM. Hey folks, Bob Paff here. We're back with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis and um, uh, quite the buzz and quite the stir uh, having the former police commissioner on here. The timing is just really perfect with what we said is about to be the ninth, if confirmed, Baltimore City uh, Police Commissioner. And so I want to go through some of the chronology, if, if I can, Kevin. I want to talk about, give, give a little bit about your background. We talked about what you did in Anne Arundel County. We talked about what you did in Prince George's County as far as the uh, the opioid crisis and the mental health intervention and what you brought into Baltimore City that I think a lot of our listeners out there don't know about. People are calling in left and right. So, folks, this man did a lot for us that you never even heard about. Uh, call it political, call it whatever you want, but um, sworn in in 2015 after Anthony Batts was fired. I think he was fired, right? He was. He was yeah. fired, all right. And then, so you came in under Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, and then you were dismissed in early 2018. We talked about that by Mayor Pugh, and a lot of that, Kevin, I have to believe, and I know our listeners are going to hear that, the whole Sean Souter thing, and now the report, and you disagree with the report that, that, he, that he killed himself, uh, and we talked about that a little bit, but I gotta think if I'm a listener out there and just being a citizen of Baltimore that you were scapegoated a little bit, something dramatic had to happen, right? That thing was out of control. The mayor was out of control, and you were kind of fish bait, if you will, for lack of a better expression, and thrown under the bus for that. Well, Bob, I think uh, unfortunately every Baltimore police commissioner in recent times is, is on, forgive the pun, on borrowed time. And I remember wow. my, my one of my first radio appearances was with former Senator, State Senator Larry Young back in 2015, and he said, uh, Kevin, make sure you rent and don't buy. Rent and don't buy. No but permanency. I, but, I, but I lasted longer than four out of my Ugh. last five predecessors, and you, you always think you're going to be the one who's going to last um, eight years like Chuck Ramsey in D.C., nine years like... Well, that's what... Years. Talk to us about tenure. What's well, the average tenure? You know, it's... Well, the average tenure for a big city police chief is probably between three and four years. Okay. So, uh, but the successful cities, D.C., L.A., New York, for example. Chuck Ramsey did not only eight years in D.C., but he did nine years in Philly. Kathy Lanier served as police chief in D.C. for nine years. Wow. Bill Bratton, LAPD, seven years. Ray Kelly, NYPD, 12 years. So, But that takes sophisticated, mature political leadership. To a lot ride. of support. you got, you got to have support. Right. And you got to ride the waves. Right. And, and the, who suffers, Bob? The, the residents of the, the city suffer with such great turnover. And then the men and women of the police. I was going to say the team. The team suffers on a daily basis. Imagine, you know, it's kind of like the Washington Redskins. My, my beloved Washington <laughs> Redskins under, <laughs> under Dan Snyder. Uh, they go through head coaches left and right. right. And then when you compare them to the, the Ravens, they've had two head coaches for the last, what, 20 years? Right. So it's kind of reverse. But sophisticated political leadership, and, and I'll say this again. I've said this publicly uh, T.J. Smith, who was my 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 guy, T.J. I hope you're out there I, listening. I, I brought him to, okay. uh, to Baltimore from Ann Arbor County. Okay. Uh, he absolutely would be a game changer as the mayor of the city of Baltimore in 2020. I agree with you. He's got the support. He's got the intellect. He's got the he's got the passion. He's got the fire for it, Kevin. And and he would be doing it for the right reason. Right. City first, not not self first, but city first. That's right. That's where we're stuck right now, Bob. But uh, I don't mind. And, and I, I wouldn't necessarily use the word scapegoat. I, you, you know it's coming, and I don't think it was a singular thing. I don't like you know Sean Souter for incident, for incident, um, or, uh, Sean Souter or the the crime rate, or even I've had people come up to me about and say, hey, I heard uh, you got fired because of Amazon. 
So the rule is oh, geez, they but, do. But really what happens in I hadn't this heard that one. is the city council members, they partner with each other when they want to see someone who they want as right. police commissioner. Right. And then they put political pressure on the mayor and they cut deals in back rooms. And then, you know, a police commissioner is then suddenly out. But I enjoyed every minute of it, uh, Bob. We did move the needle. Uh, we, we, I think with, particularly with post-riot Baltimore, uh, the Department of Justice investigation, the consent decree, we changed the use of force policy, we introduced body-worn cameras, we introduced um, mental uh, health crisis teams, we introduced early intervention for cops. So we did move the needle. You don't read about it on the front page of the Sun, but um, I think I left the department better than... Uh, so you feel good about, so if we talked about the Kevin Davis legacy, which I'd like to, you feel good about all the things that you just rattle off that you've yeah, done that yeah, did not exist... I mean, it wasn't just me. It, it was, right. you know, folks like T.J. Smith and and, and Jason Johnson and, and Ganesha Martin and Drew Vetter and Jim Gillis and so many others. Um, and I hate to start naming names because I'll leave people out, but we did move the needle. And, and policing post riot, post and uh, criminal uh, charges against the six Baltimore police officers involved in the Freddie Gray right. in custody, that, that was a tough time to, yes. to police in the city and the violence spiked. Um, certainly, there are regrets, but we tried our very best. Uh, there, there were no ethical s scandals, uh, but uh, proud of it. And, and I, uh, but all I can do now, Bob, is tell someone like Joel Fitzgerald if he, he needs to bend my ear or if he you know, wants the advice of me or many others who have served before him, he should take advantage of that because we all want Joel Fitzgerald uh, to succeed for the sake of the city and the police department. Not the politicians, but the city and the police department. You know, Kevin, I, want, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news because I'm, I'm an optimist. And again, I, I, I love the city and, and I'm a city guy, those who know me. But I just don't know how we turn this around. Like, I, I'm for term limits in general anyway. People get in there and they never get out. Um, and I think this whole representation of, you know, by the people and for the people is also a misnomer. I think so many folks, and more, more so Washington, I think, than a city like Baltimore because the politicians are kind of part of the community here. But, um, uh, you know, do these folks really... Rep Baltimore has a lot of unique problems. We talked about racial tension. We talked about a city that I think the demographics is, is, what, 60 to 70 percent African-American versus uh, Caucasian. We talked about the crime. Most of the crime, correct me if I'm wrong, most of the crime is black against black? Most violent crime victims, Bob, are ab absolutely African-American. Okay. And so then we could get into, and I want to have you back on the show. I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm hold you to that and hopefully get you back in here. Then we talk about the decline of the family. We talk about the decline of the community, Kevin. We talk about the mental health issues that you talked about. We talk about the opioid ep epidemic. You blow this thing up from, from Baltimore. Baltimore is like a microcosm of everything that's going wrong in the country. Absolutely. Any and everything that's going wrong across our nation is it's all here. present tense going on right here. But if we get the sophisticated political leadership we need, uh, you know, from someone like T.J. Smith, look look at Washington, D.C., Bob, just down the road. Yeah. After the scandalous years of Mary and Barry, they had a series of mayors, starting with Anthony That's Mayer, correct. who brought that city back. They brought it back. Uh, you know, they brought it back in terms of the crime fight, in terms of economic development, in terms of the health of the city. So it can be done. So like you, I remain optimistic. It can't be the same old, same old names running for mayor in 2020. That's right. It can't. It just can't. And we've got to get term limits on the city council. We need people to put city first and self a distant second. Kevin, it's servant leadership. I mean, I think we, we, we forget, you know, people drive around with security detail. And listen, I understand it's a crazy world we live in. We've got 307 mass shootings. You know, and, uh, and uh, it, it, so far. And so I, I understand that. But people govern and they rule from the ivory tower. I talk about Tom Peters all the time and his an acronym of MBWA, Management by Walking Around. And I think people need to get out. They need to get out from the ivory tower. And this would go to putting police on the street and all that. We're going to run out of time again, folks. We'll be back with you just, just a little bit. You're listening to The Bob Pound Show with former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis. Honored to have him in the studio. He's joined us and he's given us a lot of terrific information. We'll be right back. We'll try to take another caller uh, on the other side of this break. You're listening to the Bob Paff Show. Hey Bob, how long did it take you to write this? You know, it came out in 2015. Um, I sold 5,000 copies the first year alone. The average book sells 234 copies. Really? So if you walk into Barnes & Noble, you think everybody wrote a book, but they didn't. And here's the reason why. I've got a sales, marketing. So I've got a sales and marketing and media background, and you've got to work it, Kevin. So I'm 
I also recorded it on Audible because I do voiceover work for like National Geographic and others. So I recorded it so people who don't want to read it can listen to it. And then you download it on your phone. Your voice? Yeah, my voice. All these commercials are my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it reads like, and as you get into it, um, it reads like a story. So somebody referred to it as 16 very digestible chapters. I use my life as an example. What happens when we don't communicate? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, but when I was here, the Redskins were winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. With but that? I, they, they, then we got a horrible one. Yeah, I did. And then we went to the Dash Radio 680 WCBM. Here we go. I love it. Hey, folks, you're listening to The Bob Paff Show. If you were just tuning in, and I can't imagine you're just tuning in, we have former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis here in the studio with us. And again, on the heels of uh, what I'm going to call a secret sort of announcement. It's a Friday afternoon. We were talking to the former commissioner about that. Why do you make an announcement like this in secrecy uh, on a Friday afternoon, the week before Thanksgiving? Folks are out of here. Folks are on planes and trains and boats and buses, and they're leaving. And it looks... It looks a little suspicious to sort of sneak this in. So um, I appreciate the commissioner's comments about Joel Fitzgerald and offering the support. And certainly as a resident of Baltimore, I do. We want this to work. But um, so anyway, you're you're listening to us uh, talk live with the former Baltimore City Police Commissioner. I want to take one call. We'll take Anita. Can we take one call? Uh, looks like we've got uh, who is that? Bruce. All right. We're going to take Bruce. Bruce, you're on the Bob Pam show with uh, former Commissioner Kevin Davis. How can we help you? Thank you. Okay. Hey, Bruce, we got other people holding on. Is there a question buried in here somewhere? I feel it, but can you share it with us? Push back. Okay. Got it. So we need to change the narrative and change the dialogue, Bruce, is what you're saying. Maybe good advice for, for the... <laughs> Well, so that was an interesting comment. I mean, the, our caller thinks that you should, we should push back and stand up. And of course, of course, the odds. You're, you know, you're standing up against the city hall. You've got a lot of things on your. And, and Bob, it's a tough profession. And, yes. And we do get a lot of scrutiny and criticism, and, and quite frankly, we should because we're the only profession in our country that can take someone's freedom away. And, That's right. And can use force legally, use force up to and including deadly force. So I don't mind wow. the scrutiny. I don't mind the criticism. Um, I, I certainly uh, understand the, the some of the sentiments that Bruce was trying to communicate. I appreciate the call. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so, so you know, Kevin, we we always want to go out of here on a on a really positive note. The picture looks. I, I got to tell you, I'm I'm not optimistic for the first time in a long time. I just I don't see anybody on the horizon other than TJ, and I think he's got the right mentality. He's got the He's got the support of a lot of people. He's got a broad perspective. Other than that, it's the same old, same old. I hate to say it, folks. Um, I, I've been asked to run for everything, and I'm not running for anything. I'd be, I'd, I'm better off on the outside saying we need to work together. And, and, and one of the things, Kevin, I think we need to do, and, and I would, again, I'd love to have you back, is I think we need to build that bridge between the public and the private sector. We need to bring West Baltimore and the development into that. The world cannot revolve around Harbor East. We cannot have affluent pockets that are getting smaller and smaller because the crime is happening now in Federal Hill. It's happening in Canton. It's happening all over those places. Criminals aren't dumb. Yeah, a, a rising tide, Bob, should lift all, all boats. And if you look at D.C. and some of the tougher neighborhoods back in the 80s and 90s, they are flourishing. Yes. Not just surviving. 
the flourish yes because of that type of approach that you're describing it was one that was taken by by sophisticated government well it, it's one of the things that i'd like to do is having those connect and i and i think this current mayor is maybe from philadelphia not that you can't move here from someplace else and be committed to the city and love the city but folks we need that partnering of the public and the private sector we need i'm going to try to get kevin plank on the show we need the under armors of the world to, you know, let's put a store, let's put a plant, let's make a commitment to the other side. But let's be business friendly. Oh, I absolutely agree with you. You, be you do have to be business friendly. I agree. But we need to be, you know, we need to be other. Folks, when we come back on the other side of this, we're going to talk to Commissioner Davis about what does he think we need to do? Can we turn this around in Baltimore City? And what is it going to take for us to turn this around to stop the crime and bring people back together? Uh, you're listening to The Bob Pam Show on WCBM. We'll be right back. Ways to increase your sales, motivate your team, and improve your relationships, make them more effective, persuasive, and passionate speakers. Tired of doing the same old things and expecting a different result? Let Bob Pat and his communicating to win strategy help you become a better human being, to lead a more peaceful, productive, and engaging life focused on reaching all your personal and professional goals. Let Bob show you who's on your team and how to keep DC, Northern Virginia, all that. That's exactly right. Anything. You're exactly right. I want to get him in here. I've got some great ideas, but it really is going to take picking up the phone and calling the guys that, you know, I'm on Facebook Live and that's okay, Miles and Stockbridge or Whiteford Taylor or the big firms and the big businesses and getting those guys, the Ellen and Tuckers of the world and all those guys who I know and sat on boards. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, that's why I said worse than I ever imagined. I think they were. I've had private conversations with some of those guys who were just shaking their heads, like, you know, this is a train wreck. How many years to Chevron? Two. Okay. If you're looking for a wonderful dining experience, no have you been to Cipriana in Roland Park? This is my girl, Maria. So we have, we did a show with her. She is, oh my God. That's a great story. 30 years ago, they started out with a food cart, not a food truck, a food cart. When I was a banker, a young banker, people would stand on Light Street around the corner to get her chicken pita sandwiches. And this is their first restaurant. It's a, it's a wonderful story. It's a wonderful story. And these are the kind of, you know, and I'm all about small business and supporting each other and getting out. She sponsors my show. I mean, it's just, Maria, love you. We're talking about you. Anything that you want to make sure that we get out because we're going to come up in the What's up? No. No, 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 no. Anything that you want to make sure that we, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to throw it to you. And what, you know, Kevin, can we turn this around? And what do you think we need to do? Yes, perfect. That's how we'll, we'll go out. He's rarely happy. You know, I think the Chiefs are exciting this year with that quarterback. I mean, how can you not, right? I think it's a second one free. You can never bet against the Chiefs. Oh, my mom's a Patriots fan. I'm a Patriots fan. Use this code and take advantage of this special offer. Call today at 800 That's 800 262 5483. Or use the code online when you visit myrestaurantproducts.com. That's my restaurant. Nina. We were talking about that guy that called that Claude or whatever his name was. Because she vets them. And she says, give a question and go to the question. And then he just so Because when you get him on here, you just don't. You know, and that's why I said. <laughs> and, I, and I think I'm pretty nice. But, you know, you got to be like, i got to move this on. i got 38 minutes and you can't have four of them. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Yeah, that would make sense. Brady's amazing. Love or hate him, and people seem to, but give it to the guy, right? Love him or hate him, but uh, so the way he takes strawberries. Correct. He's never eaten a strawberry. He's never eaten a strawberry? Yeah. Yeah. They like lock Brady up and only let him out. Elizabeth, that's funny. 
<laughs> but you cannot deny the talent and and the dedication to the game and his, to himself, right? I mean, you, you, here we go. We're going back. Hey, folks, you're back with the Bob Paff Show, and we've got former Baltimore City Police Commissioner Kevin Davis. And, Kevin, I want to put you on the spot a little bit here. We're going to talk about what's going on, what are you doing, where are you, because people want to know. But I also want to talk to you from your perspective, and your, I think you told me fourth-generation law enforcement. Is that right? Yeah, fourth generation. Fourth generation. So you've got a terrific perspective here in Maryland and, and just, just the people that you know. Can we turn this around? What are we going to need to turn it around? And then I want to take you into what are you doing? What's the future for you? Are you staying in law enforcement? What are we? What can we expect from Kevin Davis? So, so Bob, we can turn it around. We can. All right. Sophisticated political leadership in the mayor's office and a city council that supports the mayor in her effort for public safety, period. And partners with the business community and considers the business community a friend and not Oh, my God. Fellow. You're pre right. Friend and not a fellow. Absolutely. And beyond that. Make the BPD number one in the following categories, Bob. Highest paid, best equipment, best training, best uh, residency opportunities, best incentives for education. Recruit and attract, right? right? Make it attractive. Make right. them come here. Build it and they will come. We're losing too many good cops. Wow. Um, Folks, you heard it there, and I, I could not agree more. I mean, I think we've got pretty much a, a, a do-nothing city government. Um, I'm not seeing any change. It's just the, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect different results. So um, having said that, we really do. I, God, you know, Kevin, I want to leave this show, and I want to have hope. I really do. But I, it's just a tough with A lot of changes need to occur. This guy coming in has got a tough job ahead of him. The time that we've got left, I want to hear what you're doing, uh, what we can expect from you. Are you going to stay in in, uh, in law enforcement? What's Kevin Davis up to? So, Bob, here's what I'm what I'm up to. Um, number one, I'm, I'm, I never thought I would say I'm an adjunct professor. Oh, so I'm congratulations! A, I'm an adjunct professor at American University, and I enjoy that. I'm teaching one. Congratulations to the undergrads. That's a lot of fun. I'm working for a cyber and physical security out of Boston called Armored Things, and they provide data, intelligence, technology solutions to some of these cy problems with siloed information. And then the third thing I'm doing, and this is not going to be my announcement, so I won't tell you who okay. the foundation is, but I'm going to be writing a book on the history of police reform, particularly the history of consent decrees in America from like 1992 Rodney King wow. forward. So I'm looking forward to doing all three of those things. I may at some point in my life return uh, to the business. You need a break? I need a break. Okay. I was going to say, you got a family and you've got. I had to reintroduce myself to all of them. But right. I've been very fortunate to work uh, with and, and, and around some great people. Um, I've been lucky. Uh, I've been I've been blessed, and I, I love the profession. No, uh, no regrets whatsoever. And that, you know what? That's a wonderful way to look at it. I mean, you've had a terrific opportunity. You've had a great run. Clearly, you've done some great things. You've educated me tonight. I know our listeners out there, the things that you've done, because we've, we've done our homework and um, in Anne Arundel County and Prince George's County, the things that you've done, my my passion for uh, mental mental illness and mental health and, and suicide prevention and all those things. Kevin, you've done a you've done an outstanding job. It sounds like, too, you're willing to be available to this new guy uh, who's coming in. Yeah, so, so Joel and I, um, the last time I remember speaking to Joel was in some city. I just don't remember when it was. We had a great conversation. He can do it. He's up to the task. He needs help. He okay. needs to bring his own team in. He needs help. And, and he needs to be given an opportunity to ride. Wonderful. Road. You hear that, folks? Listen, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Folks, once again, you're listening to The Bob Pav Show. Have a terrific week and a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week. Take care. She's good. What's up? She just keeps you right on the track. She's good. We work really well together. I mean, we boom, boom, boom. All right, guys. Look for the Redskins when we're in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't going to be the Ravens. Yeah, I got to know Steve Bishotti when I was a chief man of London. Oh, really? So that's like, oh, so that's true. I always tell my friends, if you could take the shot and put him in charge of the Redskins, we'd be a different organization overnight. Yeah. And I, but I know Dan Slater because the stadium in Washington is in Prince George. So oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. a very challenging personality. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's a mild way of putting it. That's about as positive as I can get. Hey, folks, thanks for joining us out there. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.